This is All India Radio. Welcome to Science Serial. Life must go on. All India Radio in collaboration with Vigyan Prasad presents Science Serial Life Must Go On based on understanding and managing sustainable development. Episode number 1st titled Curtain Razor. It's a pleasure to be with old friends. There's Dr. R Gopichandran, Director Vigyan Prasar, Senior Scientist Vigyan Prasar, Mr. Vikas Tyagi. We're also joined by Mr. Anand Sharma, who's Regional Coordinator, Agromed Division, Indian Meteorological Department. And of course, there's Professor Chandan Ghosh, who's Head, Geohazard and Risk Management Division, National Institute of Disaster Management, Ministry of Home Affairs. Gentlemen, welcome to the studio. And I hope you'll agree with me that life must go on, life has to go on, and life should go on. Now, this is the title of our next serial, which we are about to launch, about to embark upon. This particular serial is based on the subject of the oft-heard term, sustainable development. Now, many of us have heard a lot about sustainable development. Everyone knows the term. You ask anyone the definition of sustainable development or what actually is meant by it, you know what the answer is. So we've come together to discuss this particular theme in connection with our new program, Life Must Go On. And to begin with, may I ask you, Dr. R. Gopichandran, what exactly is, even I would like to know, what is sustainable development? On behalf of Vigyan Prasar, let me start by saying that we are grateful to All India Radio and to the wonderful team that is present here for deliberating on this very, very important aspect. Thank you, Manoj, for um, asking this very important question. Life, as you very rightly said, must go on. And it is not as if life will not go on. You know, it is the beauty of nature, hmm. which is very, very resilient. We as humans have to understand and practice values of equity and justice while extracting using our resources and while discarding our wastes without really creating an extra pressure on nature and systems of nature. Uh, I would like to tweak this into what is called sustaining development. Hmm. It is not as if we are going to debate on whether what is sustainable development and how should it be done. I've got three very important aspects to place before all of us here today. Number one is the aspiration to develop is present in all communities. Every community should respect the aspiration of a neighboring community. This is the essence of coming together. Now, in that process of respecting, it is absolutely essential to make sure that we do something very interesting and important. We have so far been talking of what is called the footprint. Sustainable development goals talk of what is called the handprint. It is about the impact of our corrective actions. And therefore, mm -hmm. this serial, and I must give credit to my wonderful colleagues in Vigyan Prasar, led by uh, Sri B.K. Tyagi, mm. you know, to, to connect this concept of sustainable development or sustaining development with facets of life, of water, of energy, of agriculture, of tackling disasters, of an urban environment or of a natural environment, just to prove one single point. And that takes me to the final one. That one point is to say, hmm. science is cross-cutting. Our sure. ability to understand and practice a handprint that mitigates and helps adapt hmm. is the name of the game. Yeah. Therefore, we move from footprint to handprint. This concept evolved close to about 8 to 10 years ago, you mm. know, in the field of environmental education from within India. And now, this is a wonderful opportunity for us to deliberate. And the third and the final point is, it is not as if our people did not know about sustainable development. Mm. Indian society is probably one of the most resilient ones. And uh, am I wrong in saying that we know how to respect nature? No, no, not at all. I think. Which yeah. therefore means, mm -hmm. When we speak with our fellow citizens in our country, we should invite their attention to this concept by saying, look, mm. you have come from a system that has taught you sustainability. Now, please relate it 
to a larger scale of what is required at the national level, regional and the global level. That was uh, the essence of uh, the topic in the quintessential Gopichandran style. And moving on to Mr. Bika Tyagi now, I would like you to throw some light on the what's and how's of uh, the entire project that we are about to embark on. Okay, I think what Gopiji is saying, I'm just taking it to the <laughs> next. Uh, like you and know, we have taken up this uh, the 17 goals, sustainable development goal. And India is also like a signatory or part of that sustainable goal. And our Niti Aayog has already, you know, given a very big... Uh, blue plan what how mm. the ministries and different department has to play a role mm. we in vigyan pasar is into communication science communication and the success of these uh, the for achieving the these goals mm. it's necessary that the, the people should be engaged in that process of un, uh, of of what the government is planning to do mm-hmm. without their involvement i think it will be very difficult to achieve the success and for that thing, for engaging them in a very positive way or in a very meaningful way, mm. it is necessary that we should uh, all should be mentally at a one platform. Mm. We should understand what sustainable development is, what we are supposed to do, what are our uh, f- footprints and what should be our handprints. Mm. So for that it is necessary some of those fundamental things, uh, knowing the state of art, what mm. it is already existing and what it ought to be hmm. in terms of achieving those goals uh, to ensure that engagement and to mm-hmm. ensure that participation of all people from all walks of life is one of the objective of uh, this radio serial and we have focused mainly on children which are the future citizen of our country uh, mainly on them but it is again to involve everybody, every person in mm. the society because if uh, something is happening in, in terms of uh, when we talk about sustainable development, whether it is our economic development or uh, social development or environmental development, mm. it bound to affect all of us whether irrespective of age, our profession or our economic or social class. So it's necessary that all should be engaged in that process of uh, achieving those goals and uh, before that we should have that minimum understanding of mm. those basic concepts which involve the fundamentals of uh, science also. Mm. So this serial is, is an attempt mm. towards uh, engaging people mm. in, in uh, achieving the sustainable development goal. Ananji, you are the regional coordinator in the agromat division of the IMD. Uh, one very simple question one gets to hear about natural resource management. How is this term connected with the entire gamut of uh, sustainable development that we are discussing here? See, we have limited resources on this planet, hmm. but uh, we have an unlimited appetite. Hmm. That's creating a problem. You mean consumption patterns? Consumption or? pattern. Actually, hmm. I mean, limited resources, hmm. whether it may be water hmm. or, I mean, any of the agriculture pr- producers, hmm. hmm. forests produce, air, hmm. these are all natural resources. Hmm. They are limited, but as the population is increasing and appetite is increasing, there is no limit, you know, to consumption. Hmm. We are consuming more and more. So consumption is, has reached such a level that it is not sustainable now because mm-hmm. it is creating more problem to the environment. That is one aspect. Second thing is natural resources, when we say it takes into account water, air, soil, even ice, hmm. that these are all so how humans are impacting this? Hmm. Whether you see right from the beginning when we are hunter-gatherer society, hmm. which started with the hunting and gathering, and then they moved to shifting agriculture. Hmm. So there you see shifting agriculture. They used to slash and burn, hmm. and they used to produce crops. And over the period, the production came down. They shifted to a new place, and then again slash and burn. Hmm. That is how. And when they used to come back to the original place, Again, there used to be forest. So that mm. time it was sustainable. But as the population increased, the entire system became unsustainable. Mm. Then people moved from the this slash and burn agriculture to the modern agriculture. And modern agriculture, again, it is maybe economically it is stronger. That means you get more money out of it. But when mm. we see ecology part of that, it is not ecologically sustainable. Mm. Because in a modern agriculture system, 30 units of petrol like kind of thing goes in as an input and output is one unit. Mm. 
Mm. But if you see a traditional agriculture system, which is practiced by the traditional societies, mm. they're all, everything is human energy. So if you put one unit of energy as human energy as input, output is something like 20 to 30 units. Mm. So that kind of system is ecologically as well as economically sustainable. But modern agriculture is not sustainable. And not only that, modern agriculture has created many problems. Sorry, mm -hmm. Manoj, sure, I sure. just I want to inter ask one uh, very natural query. Right. You want to say that we should go back to those those uh, traditional agriculture system, but then how we are going to feed so many yes, people? Yes, yes. See, mm -hmm. well, that is what we have to strike a balance. Mm -hmm. That means, you know, like that's why people are again moving to organic agriculture. Mm -hmm. That's what the earlier people, traditional societies was practicing. Mm -hmm. And we have realized with more fertilizer, chemicals, and this is also creating problems of cancer and other mm -hmm. kinds of problems. And even water bodies are also polluted. Mm -hmm. So now issue comes, you know, modern agriculture, productivity is high. Mm -hmm. And organic culture productivity is... But at what cost? Yeah, mm -hmm. but at what cost? That's that's a question. Taste is not so good. Mm -hmm. they, uh, you must have heard people saying mm -hmm. uh, earlier, the yeah, everything vegetable, be it vegetable yeah. or whatever it is, it used to be very tasty. Mm -hmm. that, Desi variety, which we... Desi uh, variety, yes. Which is generally used, uh, Desi so, variety. Right. So mm -hmm. now we have to see, you know, like we can strengthen these traditional uh, agriculture systems or we can, we have to strengthen the organic system. Mm -hmm. That means so that productivity, if not at that level, little lower also will do. So how we can do it that if you see the olden system, you know, it, it has recycling of yeah. things. Mm -hmm. You had animals from there mm -hmm. used to get cow dung, mm -hmm. that cow dung and then whatever leaves, etc. used to be there. They used to recycle, compost it mm -hmm. and the same thing used to go to your farm. Mm -hmm. So that system had a, a recycling mechanism. So that somehow as the modern agriculture with came the tractors. So mm -hmm. this animals, people, I mean, start using them. So even the cow dung part also reduced. So that's how the system got disturbed. But I think we have to have a sustainable development. Mm -hmm. The entire thing recycling like agroforestry. Again, what is happening is that you have agriculture as well as forest or trees. These trees, you know, are uh, placed in such a manner that they do not, uh, they allow the light to go to the lower crops. And at the same time, their roots are at a lower level. So they don't compete with the crop for water and nutrients. Mm -hmm. So it is sustainable again. So that's what agroforestry system. These are all traditional practices, which again, people are reviving them. So this is one. Okay. Uh, quickly, Professor Ghosh, what a brief answer for, uh, from you. If I may call it the fourth pillar, disasters. Of course, we can't do much about natural disasters, but there are certain man-made disasters, which whose impact can be mitigated, so to say. How do you look at disasters in the entire realm of sustainable development that we've been discussing? Yeah, very nicely this discussion that continued. Disaster is a new term that is known to us mm. for the last one decade or so. And also before one decade or one and a half decade, we used to say that most of the disasters are created by nature. But over the years, what we are seeing that uh, there is nothing like nature made. Mm. It is the people, it is all what the way that we are sustaining our life in an unsustainable manner, mm. the kind of infrastructure that we are making to make our life more speedier, more mm. technologically elegant and so many things. So when we are competing in that direction, then we are forgetting that the nature which is there, we are taking everything from the nature, only in the advent of industry, manufacturing, factory and all these things, we are manufacturing something artificially mm -hmm. which is coming up as a burden to us. And as far as disaster is concerned, there are in our country, we are getting it more familiar as and when things are happening, whether it is tsunami or Gujarat earthquake mm -hmm. or Sikkim earthquake or Kashmir earthquake or even urban flood which was not known mm -hmm. even a decade back. Uh, from 2005, uh, July, Mumbai mm -hmm. flood onward, we have become familiar with that. And because of the climate anomaly that which is happening, which is whole world is concerned with that, the earth that we are living over here, it is no more a natural, rather we have made it as a boiling point and we are changing everything for the sake of some kind of, uh, you know, benefit. But on the hind side of that, mm. we are seeing that we are we are all getting it after harming the natural process. That is why in the in the disaster domain, mm. uh, number of efforts are going on 
सिंस योको हमा कॉन्फ्रेंस और इवन बिफोर दैट इंटरनेशनल डिकेट फॉर नेचुरल डिजास्टर रिडक्शन बाय यूएन आफ्टर दैट क्यूटो प्रोटोकॉल और देर आर सो मेनी एंड रिसेंटली दैट सेंडाई फ्रेमवर्क दैट हैज कम अप वेयर इंडिया इज आल्सो अ सिग्नेटरी एंड आफ्टर दैट इंडिया गवर्नमेंट आल्सो हैव टेकन into account of fra- under that framework what are the strategies to be taken by 2030 so that we can make disaster risk reduction is our mainstream activity mm. keeping that goal in mind and where sustainable development goals are all incorporated together mm. as on date what india is being taken up especially with the formation of institutionalization of disaster management in the country mm. creating national institute of disaster management where i come from mm. then national disaster management authority or national disaster response force which you know that whenever some disaster happens whether mm. recently we can say uttarakhand mm. or even chennai flood which are all happening and there you can see the face of army like in case of uttarakhand or even disaster response force which is a dedicated force who have been uh, really made active in order to check that after disaster happens mm. and then take care of things that post disaster so what is happening in the current context of our goal towards disaster risk reduction is from response or reaction centric attitude mm. to mitigation and pre- preparedness centric attitude is preventive. developing mm. preventive mm. and mm. so that at the same time sustainable development has taken a center space of taking all this disaster management or disaster mitigation related things mm. in the gamut of making our life uh, more sustainable okay. more comfortable taking nature into our center of activity thank you professor ghosh tagi ji this is what we discussed about the subject as such yeah. coming on to more specific things i'm referring to the program life must go on that we are about to begin tell us something about the structure that you have in mind okay it's actually we had a meeting in bangalore where uh, all the important stakeholders subject experts mm-hmm. then the people who are involved in the making of this program in all mm-hmm. the languages you may be knowing that this program will be produced in uh, 19 languages okay. including hindi mm-hmm. and english hindi english is uh, being broadcast from uh, 4th june Hmm. and uh, the title in hindi is uh, like if we have the life must go on in english hmm. hindi we are calling it chalti rahe zindagi wonderful title yeah, yeah. Hmm. so if we look at the title that hmm. means like life should continue that and it will depend on our resources hmm. natural resources hmm. that we the, the in in total identity the mother earth hmm. so the way we are consuming the resources of hmm. nature hmm. if the strain will continue mm. i think we'll reach to a point of no return where the mm. all the these natural resources will be in such a position mm. that uh, the the survival of life on this earth will be difficult mm. okay mm. so this is like uh, inspire us to give us so to have a quality life mm. what we should do and sustainable development is uh, like one aspect mm. which mm. will help us to improve the situation so in this uh, serial it will be a year long program hmm. which will be broadcast on sunday hmm. and we have fragmented it into five segments hmm. first is like uh, because we need to engage the people in this developmental process hmm. they should understand what is the meaning of sustainability hmm. how we were uh, as dr gopichandran has said like the concept of sustainability to indian culture is not new hmm. so how indian ethos and 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 practices hmm. is uh, of sustainable practices were being followed in that so all those aspect the technical term what the un is saying what india stand is on this mm. so just to make familiar about mm. uh, the the sustainability because now sustainability has been a main mantra of all development the buzzword planning. yeah mm. so first segment is on that basically mm. second we are talking about then the energy because most of our environmental situation is going to be like uh, worst because of energy uh, type of energy mm. the way we are producing it it is a carbon based so mm. which is increasing the co2 level global warming climate change all is attributed to towards this factor mm. so what are the possible option 
in terms of uh, like having a sustainable energy for all then we are talking about the energy energy options and uh, uh, which is more uh, preferable than the one and how we can conserve you know the, those uh, conventional practices and third is like uh, the ensuring the potable water mm. for all because this is again r- related to our environment and health sector then the fourth is we are talking about the natural resource management mm. and the fifth is is to ensure our sustainable uh, cities and a safe human uh, settlement mm. so these are in between after each segment we have a interactive session in which we'll be inviting an expert group okay. of expert okay. Okay. to answer the mm. queries of listeners so the effort has been made to make this program more interactive mm. so our listeners this is a uh, just uh, you may pay an attention to my words that you can also participate in uh, this radio serial by answering a question which will be put up at the end of each episode mm-hmm. secondly the segment which we are discussing in the serial mm-hmm. if you have any question or query mm-hmm. or curiosity mm-hmm. about uh, any aspect of sustainable development please do write to us mm-hmm. and if your letter if your question is selected to be answered by our expert uh, group mm-hmm. i think then you are entitled to get a prize from uh, all india radio and vigyan prasar that will be a work book <laughs> which will be around 100 and 120 pages okay. multi color book mm. in which you can also contribute mm. about uh, your ideas and thing and it will be given to uh, to all those people to mm. winners as well as the in each uh, i mean interactive uh, session or mm. or episode i think we'll be having around uh, 50 to 20 letters so this is like how we have to progress throughout the year so i'm sure our listeners have understood what exactly we have planned to do a uh, quickly gopichandran ji on a more philosophical plane in the last 20 minutes or so we discussed about the conflict between you know development on one side and the sustainable angle on the other now laying stress on sustainable development will it not also lead to more conflict in terms of conflict with uh, the producer lobby so to say the very concept of sustainable development hmm. is supposed to resolve the dilemma the agenda of sustainability hmm. should not be mixed up with the agenda of greed as was very rightly pointed out by dr sharma even if i have to produce in an intelligent efficient manner why will i not succeed economically therefore the dilemma is not between development and sustainability mm-hmm. the dilemma is between how well do i sustain mm. the interests of my agenda with the interests and abilities of nature But if this were so simple to understand the need to stress on sustainable development would not have arisen it is not as if people do not know about it which mm. is precisely what i started with mm. this is a window of opportunity for people who wish to bring Hmm. equilibrium to come together and consolidate their efforts hmm. it is not as if we are moving towards a huge disaster it's not so right? then uh, there will be no peace on earth sustainability would have gone long time ago hmm. these are all only four warnings to say look if we do not develop this culture of sustainability hmm. we would end up in a mess therefore this is a platform of convergence and not of divergence i am saying like suppose if because of my greed i have made a lot of money hmm. but the condition of uh, my environment hmm. my society hmm. is so bad do you think then uh, how long i even despite having all that uh, access to that resources i will survive hmm. my quality of life will also become you know very bad so even if i am a producer hmm. i have to be part of this concept of sustainability i have to uh, change my mindset i have to change my style of production my planning my everything because if i have to secure my future as well so this is the whole idea that's why like engaging people whether you are a producer or consumer irrespective of that i hmm. think we all should understand and participate in this uh, uh, so called uh, the movement of sustainability okay we've come to the concluding phase of uh, this particular episode of the program life must go on the initial episode quickly in less than a minute 
I would like you to comment on the response and the impact on the earlier serial that we did together, Lest We Lose. That was on, on, on you can say it was just a uh, sub part of uh, this serial, mm. which was on uh, disaster management, managing disasters. Mm. I think the response was tremendous in terms of the letter we received, the queries we received, mm. and uh, and that still we keep on getting uh, okay. the letters. Because this was a, again an issue in which uh, irrespective of again age and uh, your social and economic status, everybody was interested in, mm. uh, in that. So uh, especially uh, in Hindi and English speaking area, we have received so many letters. Majority of them were of uh, appreciating the program uh, because uh, in terms of uh, highlighting and bringing a very new fact mm. in a very interesting way because it was in a docudrama format. So to me, I like it was a very satisfying in terms of uh, when we see the outcome in terms of awareness and uh, and we are also trying to study those letters in terms of the impact assessment if we can do something out of that in terms of uh, impact uh, which it has made. Okay, let's hope uh, this particular serial life must go on also gets a if I may say so sustainable response and which results in a sustainable impact. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Life must go on. You were listening to the first episode of this science serial produced by All India Radio in collaboration with Vigyan Prasad titled Curtain Razor. Coordinators... Dr. P. Gopi Chandran and Dr. B. K. Tyagi, presented by Sri Dilip Jha. Recording and mixing Neha Tuck. Participants expert were Professor Chandan Ghosh, National Institute of Disaster Management, Dr. Anand Sharma from Indian Meteorological Department, Dr. R. Gopi Chandran and Sri Brirendra Kumar Tyagi from Vigyan Prasar, Manoj Menkar were moderating the discussion. Hey listeners, please stay with us. Here are two questions for you. The lucky winner will get attractive prize from Vigyan Prasar. The first question is, 1. What is the sustainable developments? And second question is, 2. What are the reasons behind concept of sustainable development? You can send your answers by simple post. Our address is science serial. Life must go on. All India Radio, room number 615, new broadcasting house, Sansad Mark, New Delhi, double one triple zero one. You can also write on our email ID, radio at vigyanprasad.gov.in. Please do write or mail us your full name, age and profession. If associated with Science Club, do let us know the membership of your club. If you have any query or question, don't hesitate to write to us. We will be back again with the next episode of this science serial, Life Must Go On. Same day, same time, next week. Till then, goodbye. <music>